Okay, um, let's move on with uh, our chapter on symmetry. In the last class, we just finished with discussing all the point groups in which um, a molecule can exist. Um, now let us move toward matrix uh, representations of symmetry um, operations. So um, why, do you, why do we need this? Um, we need this because later on we will apply symmetry um, to molecular orbital theory using um, using character tables. And in order to understand character tables, we need to understand um, that symmetry operations can be represented by um, um, matrices. So a matrix um, is a mathematical construction. So a, a matrix um, contains um, or is an array of numbers that have a certain number of uh, rows and uh, columns. So when one can multiply um, two matrices, um, but one can multiply matrices only under certain conditions. Um, so in particular, um, the number of uh, columns of the second matrix has to be equal to the number of rows of the first um, matrix. And the product um, matrix um, has then um, a number of rows which is um, equal to the number of rows the first matrix has and the number of rows the um, second um, matrix has. So this is expressed here. So the product matrix IJ is um, the matrix um, A with I rows and K columns uh, times the matrix B that has uh, K rows and J columns. So now um, the um, number K must be identical. So a requirement for the multiplication of, of uh, matrices is that the number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. Otherwise, the um, um, matrices cannot be multiplied. So when we multiply two matrices, then that means that we multiply each row of the first column with each, so multiply each row of the first matrix with each column of the second matrix. And this procedure only works uh, under the condition that the number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of the rows of the second matrix. So let's practice this by a few examples to make clearer what is um, meant by this. So here, for instance, we have two so-called two times two matrices, meaning that each matrix has two rows and two columns. So first of all, we need to check if these rows, uh, if these matrices can be multiplied. Okay. Now for the first matrix, I is equal to two and K is equal to two. For the second matrix, K is equal to two and J is equal to two. So you see that K is the same. So that means that we can multiply these two matrices. So in order to do so, we have to multiply each row with each column. Um, so now that works um, the following way. So we have to start with the first row of the first matrix and the se first row of the second matrix. Uh, sorry, the first column of the second matrix. So the first row of the first matrix uh, contains the numbers one and five. And the first column of the second matrix contains the number uh, seven and four. Okay. So what do we need to do? Well, we have to multiply one 
times seven and have to add to that five times four. Okay. So this is actually shown here. And that gives the, the first character of the um, product, product matrix. So one times seven plus five times four. Okay. Um, so now um, that gives, well, 27 as you see here. So now in the next step, we have to multiply the first row with the second column. So that means that we have to multiply one times three and add to that five times eight. So you see this over here, one times three plus five times eight. So this gives you the second character in the first row of the product matrix. So one times three plus five times eight is uh, equal to 43. Okay. So now um, we have no more columns in the second matrix. So therefore we move now to the second row of the first matrix and multiply the second row of the first matrix with the two co columns of the second matrix. So we start with the first column. And that means now that we have to multiply two times seven and have to add six times four. Okay, so you see this here, two times seven plus six times four. So this now gives the first uh, character in the second row of the product matrix. So two times seven plus six times four is equal to uh, 38. So what's left to do? Well, we still have to multiply the second row with the second column. So that gives two times three plus six times eight. You see this over here, two times three plus six times eight. So this gives 54, okay? So now we have completed um, the multiplication of the two matrices and this is our and result here, we have a two times two matrix in which the numbers are 27, 43, 38, 54. So this two times two matrix is also what we expected because I was two and J was two. So um, that means that uh, two times two matrix um, is expected. Okay, um, now let us move over to a second example in which we now uh, multiply a one times three matrix, meaning a matrix having one row and three columns with a three times three matrix. So now for this matrix, I is one and K is three. For this matrix over here, K is three and J is three. So can these two matrices be multiplied? The answer is yes, because K is the same for both matrices. So now in order to do that, we again have to multiply each row with each column, okay? So now in this case, our first matrix has only one row. So that means that we only have to multiply this row with all the columns here in the second matrix. So now what does it give? So you see this, you see this here. Um, so first we have to multiply this one with this one. Okay, so we have one times one plus one times zero plus one times zero. So you see this here. One times one plus two times zero plus three times zero. So that gives us the first character of our product matrix, okay? And it is one. So next we need to multiply this row with the second column that gives, will give us the second character in our product matrix. So we have one times zero plus two times minus one plus three times zero. So you see this here, one times zero plus two times minus one plus three times zero. So that is, well, minus two. 
2 times minus 1 plus 0 plus 0 is minus 2. Last but not least, we need to multiply this row with this column over here. So we have 1 times 0 plus 2 times 0 plus 3 times 1. See this over here. 1 times 0 plus 2 times 0 plus 3 times 1. So this gives the third <coughs> character of the product matrix, which is 3. Okay. So now we are finished. Um, and we see that our product matrix is a um, one times three matrix. It has only one row, but three columns. And this is also what we have expected because here I is one and here J is three. Okay, now let's do um, a third example. So in this third example, we multiply a three times three matrix with a, a three times one matrix. So first of all, can these matrices be multiplied? So here, I is three and K is three. And over here, I is one, uh, sorry, um, um, K is three, okay, the number of columns is three. And uh, sorry, the number of rows is three and the number of columns is one, okay. So that means the number of columns over here equals the number of rows over here. Okay, and that means that the two matrices can be multiplied. Okay, so we need to do this. Um, so we have to multiply each row with each column. So in this case, we have only one column over here. So we have to multiply these three rows with this uh, one column. Okay, now what does that give? Well, that gives one times one plus zero times one plus zero times one. Well, what does that give? Well, that gives one, okay? So that gives our first character. So now we have no other columns here. So therefore we go directly to the second row. And um, now zero times two plus minus one times two plus zero times two, well, this gives just minus one times two. And this gives now the second character in the product matrix, which must be now in a different row because we have now multiplied the second row with the first column. So last but not least, we multiply this with this. So that's zero times one plus zero times two plus one times three, well, that's just one times three, which is, which explains this three over there. So in this case, we have a three times one matrix. So we have three rows and one um, column. This is also what we would have expected because we have, um, um, three rows in our first um, matrix and one column in our second matrix. Okay, um, so now why did I tell you all that? Um, that is because symmetry operations can be expressed by um, matrices. So why is this? This is because um, any object that has a particular symmetry um, has its coordinates, okay? And any atom of a molecule in space um, 
that belongs uh, to a particular point group has certain coordinates in three-dimensional space. And these coordinates can be expressed by three vectors, x, y, and z, that point to the particular point in space at which that particular atom is being located. Okay. So therefore, um, the um, position um, of an atom in the point in space can be expressed by a matrix that contains the coordinates x, y, and z. Okay? And that can be just a, a simple a three times one matrix in which we have each coordinate in each row and we have only one column. Okay, so now when we carry out a symmetry operation, then we transform the coordinates of an object from its old coordinates into its new coordinates. And these new coordinates can also be expressed by a three times one matrix. Okay, and now that means that um, um, a, 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 a matrix that when multiplied with the old coordinates gives actually the new coordinates represents the symmetry operation. Okay, and that means, well, symmetry operations can be expressed by matrices. So let us go from these abstract considerations to more concrete considerations. So for example, we can look at a molecule like H2O, which belongs to the point group um, C2V. So for instance, we can define um, the coordinates um, of any point in space within this object the following way, where the X coordinate points to the right, the Z coordinates point to the top, and the Y coordinate uh, stands perpendicular to that, okay? And this means now that any um, point within the molecule can be expressed by three vectors, X, Y, and Z, that when added up, um, point to that particular point in space. Okay, now let us assume we carry out a C2 symmetry operation. So now what will happen to the vectors that represent these coordinates? Okay, so now as we carry out the C2 symmetry operation, then we rotate this molecule around the Z axis. So let us see what happens to the vectors as we do this. Okay, so as we rotate by 180 degrees, we will see that, well, the X coordinate, which formerly pointed into this direction, will be now pointing in the opposite direction. So the length of the vector will not be changed, but the orientation of the vector will be flipped. Okay. So after the symmetry operation, our X vector representing the X coordinate will be pointing into the opposite direction, okay? Now the coordinate X will be transformed into coordinate minus X this way. So now what about the next coordinate, the Y coordinate? Well, for the Y coordinate, the same will happen. Um, the length of the vector representing it will not change, but it will be rotated by 180 degrees, now pointing into the opposite direction. And that means that any coordinate Y will be transformed into the coordinate minus Y. So last but not least, what about Z, the vector Z? Now we are rotating around the 
z coordinate and that means that the vector z um, will remain unchanged and that means that any z coordinate within the object will um, not be changed okay so now as i said before we can express coordinates by um, a matrix so we can say that the old coordinates can be expressed by three times one matrix of the form x y z so now we can generally call the um, matrix representing the new coordinates x prime y prime and z prime now as we just determined in this case the new coordinate x prime must be minus x minus the old coordinate x um, y prime um, must be equal to minus y and z prime must be equal to z so the z coordinate doesn't change okay so now um a matrix that would represent the C2 symmetry operation would be a matrix that when multiplied with the old coordinates would give the new coordinates. Okay. So now the matrix which is able to do this has this form here. Minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus, uh, 0, minus 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And we could now apply the rules for the multiplication of matrices to show that when this matrix is multiplied um, with that matrix, then it gives actually this matrix representing the new coordinates. So let us just let us just do this in order to verify that. So we have to multiply by the first row with the first and only column of the second matrix. So what does it give? Well, that gives minus one. Let me can we write this minus one times x okay plus zero times y yeah, zero. times y now um, plus zero this zero times z okay so now, well, what does that give? Minus one times x plus zero times y plus zero times z. Well, that just gives minus x. And this is exactly what we were looking for. So now we can do the same also for the other coordinates. Um, so now we have to multiply this row with this column here. So that gives uh, zero times x So now plus what? Well, minus one times y okay, and now plus what? Well, zero times C. Okay, now what does that give? Well, zero times X gives zero. 
minus one times y gives minus y and zero times z gives zero and that just gives minus y and this is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, last but not least, and I do this because of space constraints over here, we can also do this for the uh, third row. And then we have zero times um, x plus zero times y and we have to add to that uh, now one times z Okay, now what does that give? Well, that gives zero x plus zero y plus one times z, well, just gives z. So this way we have proven that this matrix here is a matrix representation of the C2 symmetry operation. Okay, so this is a very important point to understand. Now we can do the same also for the other symmetry operations in the point group. So um, there are mirror planes to consider. So one mirror plane is the XZ mirror plane that stands here in the XZ plane. So now we can ask, well, how do our coordinates transform as we carry out that symmetry operation? So now what about X? Will the x coordinate change when we carry out the symmetry operation? The answer is no, it will not. Okay, because the mirror plane is in the xz plane. So the same also with this uh, z coordinate, because the z coordinate is in the plane at which we mirror, the z coordinate is also not changed. But now the y coordinate is changed. Okay. So this vector, which formerly pointed well to the back, is now pointing to the front. Okay. So the length of the vector doesn't change, but the algebraic sign of the vector changes. So each coordinate y is being transformed into coordinate minus y. So now um, we can express this. Uh, um, in matrix form and say that, well, our new coordinates x prime, y prime, z prime um, must be um, x uh, minus y and z. Now, that means that um, any matrix that represents the symmetry operation sigma x, x z multiplied with the original coordinates will give the court final coordinates. And um, this matrix has in this case, this form one zero zero, zero minus one zero and zero zero one. And we could again show by using the multiplication rules for matrices that this is the uh, correct matrix representation, okay? Um, let us quickly check. So we have to multiply first this row with that column. So this is one times X plus zero times Y plus zero times C. Well, this is just, well, X, one times X is just X. Then we need to multiply well, the second row with the column and that's zero times x minus one times y plus zero times z. So this is just minus one times y, which is just minus y. So last but not least, we need to, need to multiply the third row with this column here. And now we have to multiply zero times x plus zero times y 
plus 1 times 3, wherein that's just 3. And this way we have shown that this 3 times 3 matrix here is the uh, core matrix that represents our sigma xc mirror plane. So now let us look at the um, second mirror plane, which is the yz mirror plane, um, which actually bisects this molecule here and this yz mirror plane contains the z axis and the y axis. So now let us consider how do the vectors change as the symmetry operation is being carried out. So now in this case, the x vector, which is not part of the yz mirror plane, 